Hello, welcome to another Commander deck artwork flip through video. So we're on to the fourth deck now from the Commander 2020 product that we're taking a look back to. I'll include links in the description to my original unboxings and any other information that I think is pertinent to this. Um, I think as I mentioned in the previous video as well, uh, if you watch that, you'll get to see the extra stuff that came with these decks. There was a cardboard uh, life counter and, I don't know, like something about yeah magic format and, and the insert as well, which I don't normally cover on these. So this was the Timeless Wisdom deck. And we've got Gavi here as our you know, lead, our main commander. So this was the blue, red, white one. There were five decks in total. And next week I'll be looking at the fifth one, so then that that will be that will be completed by uh, December of 2023. And uh, yeah, that means that for that particular video, because that's going to go out when I'm doing my um, repacks of Christmas series, we'll have two videos on a Saturday. We'll have a when I open my sixth repack, but also this will go out as a if you like a boat wall. Hey, the next video on, sorry, from this will go out as a bonus video. And we'll get that last deck done then. So, back to this one. Also interesting because this week I've been talking quite a bit in other videos about borders and foiling and various other things. So, let's go through this. This, if you remember from previous videos, we had the main commander. We had an alternate commander, and then we had two legendaries because one of the things they did with this particular group of decks is have partner. So we had two partner legendaries. So here we're actually getting you know four foil cards instead of the usual three because we've got to have four main legendaries because of the two of them are partner cards so we'll now go through the other legendaries that are in the deck that are just part of the deck itself um, that aren't intended or should I say that aren't intended as alternates for this particular deck although because you could build them for something else some of these are going to be legendaries so as is the case here we've got Chandra also got the Locust God in here. Again, you know, pointing out this whole border business now. So we're in an era of magic with this crested area, which, you know, impacts into the outer black border. Still got the, you know, we've got a blue red one here. So we've got the blue to red bleeding. We've got, you know, the fact that it's a multicolored, so it's a gold card. So it was interesting to see how those changed over the years. Esperia Supreme Judge is in here. Niv Mizzet the Fire Mind. And no doubt we're going to see a number of very interesting cards that either were reprints or have since been reprinted. We've got um a XX creature, which is a trilobite, trilobite, cryptic trilobite. So we're now moving on to our higher rarity creatures. The other thing I'd, I'd noticed with this period in Magic, and it's probably been for a little while now as we've been going through this, but I don't know if I've said anything. 
a number of pieces of artwork started to take very much a sort of, I don't know, like a, had a CGI look to them. Something else I sort of noticed. I'm not sure when that first started, but just seeing that card a moment ago didn't remind me of that. Oh, we've got a psychosis crawler in here. I'm trying to remember the set where I first saw that. Here we for you. Yeah, and if you want to see the four cards in all their glory, you know, with the rules text and everything, then I mean, obviously I'll include a, a link to the original unboxing, as I think I mentioned. We're still rare at uh, the higher rarities here, but we've moved on to enchantments. There's a number of enchantments in this deck. The other thing you might notice when you watch those original unboxing videos is how we were sort of getting into it slowly over time seeing more cards where it cared about the fact that you were playing Commander or you know the card was included in a Commander deck that sort of thing. Which of course I don't think you saw until they really started to print dedicated commander products. I mean obviously we'd seen cards before that which were clearly much more powerful or worked well had better utility maybe in multiplayer than other cards but uh, certainly with the advent of the commander product era um, you were seeing much more cards where you know having a commander was was actually mentioned on the cards so we do have a number of higher rarity non-basic lands which isn't always the case in the commander product that you have a lot you know just depends it really varies from deck to deck you know I have decks with maybe just one in them and then other ones like this where there's a lot more and the other thing which I mentioned in the previous flip throughs of these um, we were starting to see a change in the set symbol and as much as whether cards were specifically from the set that this commander product was aligned with um, they would put the set symbol on the card as opposed to the particular commander set symbol but just for those cards you can see here for this one oops bashing it there. Um, for this one you can see that this has the commander set symbol on it. And there's a Ikoria one.
And I suppose a lot of this, you know, all ties in nicely with, you know, a move away from pre-cons being more focused towards standard and then having, so, you know, things like the intro, or what were they called, Planeswalker decks eventually, so we went theme decks to intro decks to Planeswalker decks, and those slowly fizzling out over time, and then the Commander product, which was already being printed anyway, just being put front and centre instead, as almost that's the the gateway format into Magic, to some degree. So that that shift in the set symbols, I think, a little bit tied up with that whole period as well. And uh, as I've mentioned, what I will be doing is once I've finished doing the yearly releases of Commander product that I have, I will then circle back and cover those pairs of decks that they started releasing during what I think they called the Year of Commander. Um, and those were very much a move towards having you know commander decks per uh, for each of the sets. So I do have those ones where they were still fairly reasonably priced, although I think the power was dialed back slightly. But uh, nice little set of commander decks to have, I think. I've been chatting away here, obviously we've moved over to Uncommons. And the inevitable Soul Ring. And here's a Signet, along with another Signet. And a third. So, yep, we got the the sort of two of colour combinations, allied and enemy, that you need to to make all three um, colours of mana present for that cycle, because this is a blue, red, white deck. Got some tri lands here as well, which one from my core yeah. Moving on to the commons, and this is the point I normally say where at this point I'm more likely to recognise certain cards because we do get quite a number of, of reprints here. Oh dear, I'm not having a very good day, am I, with the, with the stand? And there's Commander Sphere. Ah, not too many commons in this, uh, this particular deck. So now we move on to the lower rarity non-basic lands. So yeah, we see the cycling lands in each of the colours of mana for the deck. Then we have some original Ravnica bounce land now. There's a couple of those. I think we'll probably see in a moment what's happened to the third colour combination. And we've got the Tri Land here, another one. Although obviously that's from an earlier set, so reprint there. Myriad Landscape. Temple of the False God, which was definitely seeing regular printing in these Commander decks. Also nice to see something like a Reliquary Tower. And then we've also got some cyclers at common. So we have des the, these deserts here in all three of the colours. And then more cyclers. So Drifting Meadow, Remote Isle and smouldering crater so yeah definitely a lot of cycling uh, utility 
in this particular deck from the land side of things. And then we have the third of the three relevant bounce lands from Ravnica. This one, interesting enough, is a common. The other two were uncommon. We have Command Tower, a regular contributor to these decks throughout the Commander decks history. And then this one, Ash Barons, interesting card. And then we move on to the best part of the deck. The basic lands, which come from Ikoria, no surprise. So let's just see what we've got here. And there we have one of each pieces of land and then a duplicate for the last one. So it looks like there's three pieces of artwork here. And for some of the colours there we're seeing like you know extra copies there. It feels like we've got slightly less basic lands than usual, but that might be because we've just got so much, so many like non-basics that are fixing. So as a consequence, you know, they're using up slots in the land. They're using up land slots. So yeah, as a consequence, we're going to see a lot less basic lands. But if you've been counting, yeah, it's definitely three pieces of artwork here. Okay, so we move on to the tokens. Bird and a dinosaur cat. Who would have thought? And a bird in combination with aforementioned dinosaur cat. Birds and dinosaur cats all the way down. No, I don't think so. That's the last one by the look of things. And then we've got a treasure and a spirit. As always, there's 10 cards here, but double sided, so 20 tokens. And then mental with a soldier. Angel. Always an elemental. Kraken with another elemental. Looks like we've got a couple of drake tokens, so they're with an insect. And the final one, a uh, drake with a human soldier. So quite a lot of variations. I think the last couple of decks. We've definitely seen a lot more you know, cases of same tokens, same double size tokens all the way down, but this one's quite different. So there we have it. Thanks for watching once again. Bye for now, and I will catch you in a future video.